Hey guys, it's Mr. Kennedy. I'm back with another video, and we're going to be talking about the history of DNA. All right. Now, when we talk about the history of DNA, we've already we're going to talk about these people here, and we've already mentioned Morgan in the last video. And Morgan, you know, the studies that Morgan did with uh, fruit flies in order to figure out sex-linked traits, etc. Well, we're going to talk about the other gentlemen here and, and ladies, and their contribution to figuring out that DNA is the source of all genetic material. Now, start out with the transforming principle done by Fran Frederick Griffin, and he was trying to find a cure for pneumonia, or streptococcus pneumonia, bacteria actually, and what he did was a real simple uh, test in which he took the bacteria that caused the sickness, the, the pathogen that actually caused the mice to die, uh, he heated it up, and it no longer caused the mouse to die whenever he put it into the mice. Now, if he put that heated up pathogen with a harmless bacteria, then for some reason it caused the mouse to die again. And he said there had to be some kind of thing in there that caused that harmless bacteria to transform into the pathogenic bacteria, even though the pathogenic bacteria was dead already. Um, and that transforming principle they was referring to was DNA, but he just didn't know it at the time. So basically his experiments here. You can see in A, he put the pathogenic uh, back strain into a, back, a bacteria into the mice, and the mouse died. He put a non-pathogenic strain into the mouse, and the mouse lived. He heated up the path pathogenic bacteria and put it into the mouse, and the mouse still lived. But if he put them together, for some reason the mouse died again. So there had to be some kind of transformation going on. And that led to... Avery, McCarty, and McLeod's ideas uh, of, of what to do. They took the transforming principle a little bit further, and they figured out the DNA was what was doing it. And what they did was they actually purified the DNA and the protein from the streptococcus bacteria, and they injected protein from the bacteria into a mouse, and nothing happened. And they injected the DNA into a mouse, and voila, the mouse died. So they, they figured out the DNA must be what's doing this transforming, all right? And they basically did the first experiment, had the first experimental evidence that DNA was actually the genetic material. All right, next came Hersey and Chase. Hersey and Chase did the classic blender experiment in which they used bacteriophages. And there's a picture of a bacteriophage over here. And a bacteriophage basically has a protein coat head. And it has DNA or RNA inside of it. It has this, this collar, this sheath. And it has these little legs, these tail fibers. And what it does, it actually will land on a bacteria and inject the DNA into the bacteria and cause the infection. Well, what Hershey and Chase did was they labeled the protein, the head of the, the bacteriophage, with a radioactive S or sulfur um, so they could identify it. And they labeled or tagged the DNA with a radioactive phosphorus or, or, or phosphate. And they did a little experiment in which they basically did this. Whenever they put the bacteriophage that they had labeled the, the protein coat, the head of the bacteriophage in with bacteria, they didn't see anything change in the bacteria itself. only thing that changed was in the substrate, or whenever they did the, the, the centrifuge was in the substrate, which means that the protein coat stayed with the bacteriophage. But whenever they tagged the DNA, then they actually had radioactive isotopes appear inside the bacteria cell. So they knew that DNA must be what is being the transformation factor or whatever. So they just confirmed it. And here's their little experiment why it's called a blender, because they took the bacteriophage, they put radioactive material, they blended it up, uh, they aggregated it, more or less, is what they did with the blender. Then they put a centrifuge and spin it around, and you can see different places. In the top part, the pink part up there at the pellet, up here, this, is, this up here is the substrate. The substrate is what had the radioactive uh, isotopes. And down here, the pellet had the, the, the radioactive isotopes. The bacteria was down at the bottom because it was heavier than the bacteriophages. So when you spin it out the bacteria would end up in the pellet. The substrate would be where the bacteriophage was. Uh, so that's their little experiment. And basically, they, they figured out that viral protein does not enter into the bacteria, that DNA is what enters into the bacteria. So they basically confirmed that DNA is the transforming factor.
And there's what Hershey and Chase um, looked like. All right, next, you had Chargoff's rules. And Chargoff, basically, he figured out that DNA composition varies from species to species. There's a little bit difference. Even though there's all four bases, they're not equally in quantity within each species or within each cell. So what he did was he figured out there were certain characteristics, like in humans, where A appears 30% of the time, which we know is adenine. Thymine appears around 30% of the time. Guanine appears around 20%, and cytosine appears around 20%. He said, why is this, why do they relate in such a way? And he found this very interesting, and this is where his rules came up, that A's always go with T's, and C's always go with G's. So that was the only explanation of why they would be equal amounts, or equal quantities. Okay? Uh, next, you have people you probably have heard of before, Watson and Crick. But Watson and Crick actually used information from other scientists in order to develop their theory of the structure of DNA. They, they, what, Rosalind Franklin, uh, Maurice Wilkins, and Linus Pauling were three scientists that they used their information in order to construct their idea. And of course, Watson and Crick were the first ones to figure out the backbone of the DNA is phosphorus and I mean phosphate and my mind's going blank. Uh, phosphate and sugar. And it's connected by the nitrogen bases in the middle of the rungs of the rat ladder and makes the helical shape. Now, what Rosalind Franklin doesn't get credit, but she actually is the first one to state that DNA had a helical shape. Um, and she also was the first one to suggest it had a backbone made of phosphates and sugar. And she did it through a, a process, of, I think it's called uh, crystal chromatography, I think it is. Um, I think that's what it is. But anyway, Rosalind Frank was the first one to suggest this, and she her work was presented at a seminar, and her work leaked out, and Watson and Crick got the information along with others, and they, they finally um, gave the theory of what DNA actually looks like. Anyway, I hope this helps you, and I hope you understand a little bit of the history of, of DNA, and I will talk to you soon.